2016, the year the Warriors blew a 3-1 series lead in the NBA Finals, DiCaprio finally got his goddamn Oscar, Captain America and Iron Man had their long-awaited beef, it was such a fun year. Summer 16 itself is legendary. Now of course, I remember all the parties and the fun I had in 2016, but being the wrestling mark I am, whenever I think of 2016, I can't help but think of how awesome the WWE truly was. The WWE in 2016 before the draft was solid, but once the brand split got reintroduced, the company hit legendary levels, especially SmackDown. SmackDown became a must-watch show. SmackDown just had that vibe. It had that feeling that it used to have when we were growing up. I would sit there watching SmackDown in 2016 like I was a little kid again. Two hours every week on Tuesday, live, enjoying every single moment. It felt like the mid-2000s, just so fresh and exciting. Raw, on the other hand, um, was, was still raw, you know, so the average two hours of depression and, you know, one hour of good content every now and then. But still, the WWE once again was exciting. Two brands that were building its own stars, their own champions, their own stories, their own pay-per-views, which finally brought us to November of 2016, Survivor Series. After months of Raw and SmackDown building their brands, they were going to go to battle. After more than five years, SmackDown vs. Raw was finally back. The best of Raw taking on the best of SmackDown to see who the better brand was. Now we knew it was Smackdown, but you know, we wanted to see it. And on the same night, it was the return of Goldberg. These two matches made Survivor Series 2016 one of the funnest WWE shows I've ever watched. Two matches that are total opposites of each other. There was no WWE Championship match, there was no 5 star wrestling classic. Nah, on this night, we were just sports entertained. Let's go back to 2016, pretend you're all 18 year old wrestling gifts with his vintage John Cena shirt and visor and you're at the show and let's take a look at two polar opposite matches that somehow made Survivor Series 2016 so awesome. The men's SmackDown vs Raw match was like the final battle of an Avengers movie. This is what it's like when worlds collide. Shout out to Power Man 5000. You had the best of Raw taking on the best of SmackDown. This was simply 2016 in one match. All of the wrestlers that made the year so special were going to go at it and just wild out. SmackDown had the WWE Champion AJ Styles, Dean Ambrose who was the former champion, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, and Shane McMahon. Styles and Dean were feuding for the WWE title and all the questions were, could they get along for the sake a SmackDown. Meanwhile, Randy Orton willingly himself joined the Wyatt family and the question was, was he truly a member? Was he going to be loyal? Or was this just a part of his plan to destroy the Wyatt family? And lastly, Shane McMahon. Thank God that this show didn't take place at the Rogers Center because I swear to God, Shane probably would have jumped out the CN Tower if he could. On the other side, it was Team Raw. The co-captains were Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho and then Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. Owens and Jericho were the best friends and they were the captains, but every week there would be something going on. These little fights and these situations. So were the best friends going to be best friends forever or were they just waiting to implode? Rollins was a face of Raw who was feeding with Owens and the question was could he put it aside for Mother Russia, I mean Raw. Roman was the US champion who goes way back with Rollins and Braun was just there to destroy everyone in sight. So you had all these storylines going between them, you had all this talent and the history but then you also had the larger story of Smackdown versus Raw. Weeks leading up to the show on Smackdown you had Smackdown legend Edge hyping up Team Smackdown, you had The Undertaker return and literally just throw Threaten Team Smackdown that they better win or else. And on Raw, you had Steph and Mick telling the Raw roster that if you guys don't win, there is serious changes coming. But nothing was better than the last episode of Raw before Survivor Series. So Steph and Mick invited the Smackdown general managers all the way to Raw, had them standing in the middle of the ring, and then of course they told Team Raw to come out. So Team Raw came and surrounded the general managers just for Brian to simply smile and say, you honestly think we came alone. Team Smackdown came out of the crowd, walked into the Raw ring, and went face to face with Team Raw. You had Shield members on the opposite side, World Champions on the opposite side, Bray and Braun looking at each other. It was perfect. And then Dean took matters into his own hands and the brawl began. And at this very moment, it was like, alright, this is going to be something epic. It was just so fun. Smackdown vs Raw. It felt like it was 2005 again. The star power, the history between all the wrestlers, the storylines, the build, the hype. It was insane. Like, you knew it was going to be something special, it was going to be wild, it was going to be crazy, so much hype and so much anticipation. Which brings us to the show. So Team Smackdown made their entrances and everyone got a huge pop. Chance of AJ Styles just filled the arena, Team Raw came out, Reigns was getting booed like he was a commissioner of the NFL, Jericho and Owens just blew the roof off the place, and it was time. All the talent in the ring, it had that big match feel, the crowd was on their feet, and what we got, honestly, 
was legendary. It took less than 5 minutes for all hell to break loose. Bodies were everywhere, people were flying around, jumping around, getting thrown around, Braun Strowman was just being a monster. It was wild. One second you had AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose working together, the next second they were killing each other. Poor Shane was trying to be the dad and breaking it up. Braun Strowman just went straight beast mode. He took advantage of Styles and Ambrose fighting, just walked in there and eliminated Ambrose like it was nothing. Braun was so cracked out, he wouldn't even listen to his captain. Jericho was telling him, I'm the captain now, I'm the captain now on some Captain Phillips shit. It doesn't matter. Braun almost kicked his ass too. Braun was literally trying to kill Bray Wyatt. He tried to put him through the table, but luckily, out of nowhere, RKO to Braun on the table and Randy saved his leader. The thing is though, the table didn't break, so they had to take things to another level. And that's why Shane O'Mac was there. So they put Braun on the table, 46 year old Shane O'Mac with Jordans on, goes to the top rope, says a little prayer and just flies through the air from the top rope onto the table and does a flying elbow to Braun and there was so much destruction there was so much mayhem and mind you this was like 10 minutes into the match Braun should be dead by this point right like you would assume he's dead but no 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 this crackhead gets up like nothing happened so he's trying to get back into the ring the referee's counting 8 9 and James Ellsworth the Smackdown mascot is under the ring and he's grabbing onto Braun's foot and because of that Braun gets eliminated by count out but at this very moment Ellsworth knew he fucked up. James Ellsworth ran for his life and Braun chased him like prime Freddy Krueger. He finally caught up to him, grabs him, and man, bombs away. Rest in peace to James Ellsworth who goes flying off the stage onto a bunch of tables. Back in the ring, it's 4v4, AJ Styles is holding it down for SmackDown. So Kevin Owens, who got knocked outside, is just simply tired of this. He grabs the list of Jericho, walks back into the ring, and hits Styles in the face with the list. And there are papers everywhere. I guess this is why the Kyle did paper review he hits styles with a power bomb and he's amped like yes i did it but the issue is he just got himself disqualified jericho sees this and man jericho is literally about to cry his poor list is destroyed he's running around trying to collect the papers his list is ruined there's literally tears about to come out of his eyes any second he picks up the papers it's fine he got the list he turns around r k Oh, GG, 1, 2, 3, Jericho's out, the co-captains of Raw literally choked hard in the Clippers in the playoffs. The match just went on and on and the action was always awesome, whether it was in the ring or outside of it, there were never any slow moments, but one moment that I'll never forget from this match is when Shane McMahon decided to tweak again. This mother Canucker is on the top rope, in the corner opposite to Roman, and everybody knew what was coming, he was about to go coast to coast, jump from one side of the ring to the other just to destroy Roman. Roman Reigns. His hands are in the air, he's jumping, and I swear to god, it was as if time stood still. Because ladies and gentlemen, he jumped, and just watch. Shane died. No, Shane O'Mac legit got clapped. I don't know what other word to say. That right there is the definition of clapped. Spear and midair, and no, he was out. He was out like a light, absolutely disgusting. Just destroyed. One, two, no. Shane somehow kicked out. Somehow, some way, just natural instinct, Shane kicked out. The ref is looking at him like, yo, bro, no, you're not supposed to kick out. What is, what is wrong with you? The referee just tells the announcer, no, that he's done. Shane McMahon was eliminated via knockout. Doctors come in, they checked on Shane, they slowly got him out of the ring. Yo, Shane McMahon is just crazy. Thankfully, he was fine, but watching this live, and even watching this now, it is terrifying. During this, though, you can see that Randy Orton went to Shane's kids at ringside and told them, yo, your dad's okay. Hey, everything's fine. Good guy, Randy. This match was just a beautiful mess, just non-stop action, and then we get into my favorite part of the match. So Reigns and Rollins were about to put Randy Orton through the Spanish announce table, but AJ Styles made the save. He went back into the ring to gloat like, yo, look at me, I'm AJ Styles, the face that runs the place, and he was going to lead SmackDown to victory, but out came Dean Ambrose for a little revenge. Ambrose was still salty that AJ was the one who got him eliminated, so he goes in the ring and just starts snapping on AJ Styles, just punching him and just going off referees come out to stop him but it doesn't matter when have the referees ever stopped a wrestler from beating up another wrestler so ambrose threw styles to the steps at ringside and then came security so security tried tweaking on ambrose but that was the worst mistake they could have made roman and seth saw that and it was time for the shield throwback it was time for roman and seth to ride out for their long lost shield brother roman and seth pull up and begin destroying security to help out ambrose security members are flying 
everywhere. It looked like WrestleMania 19 revenge mode. Security was defeated and then it was time. All three of them just looked at each other and the shield was unleashed like it was 2013. They all had that look in their eyes and the arena just went crazy. Ambrose and Rollins held up styles. Roman did his pose and after more than two years, we finally got the shield triple power bomb. AJ Styles gets sent through the Spanish announce table and what a moment. Goodbye AJ. He gets rolled back into the ring. He's done. One, two, three. It was down to 2v2. Roman and Seth versus Orton and Wyatt. We knew that Roman and Seth could work together, but was Randy truly a member of the Wyatt family? In the ring, Rollins was on fire doing all of his signature spots. He was in the zone. He goes to the top rope. Easy W for Raw. He's going for the frog splash. He's in the air. And bang, again. Randy Orton the GOAT. RKO. Wyatt takes the cover. One, two, three. And it was down to 2 on 1, Randy and Bray versus Super Roman. And at this point, we're like, all right, it's Roman Reigns, it's over. No way SmackDown wins this. Super Roman is, of course, gonna pull this off. It was about to go down. So in the ring, Roman Reigns is about to go for the spear on Bray. It's over, and GG, he's getting ready. He runs for the spear, and then when you least expected it, Orton shoved wide out of the way, and Randy took the spear for his boy Bray. Randy basically got split in half just for his family. Randy got speared to another dimension. He's a write-off. He's done. Roman gets up, turns around. Sister Abigail. One, two, three. Smackdown actually won. What a match. What a roller coaster. This match had it all. The spots, the storytelling, the advancement of stories, callbacks to previous stories, building up the wrestlers, the surprises, everything. I simply just love this match. Like I said, this felt like an Avengers final battle. Two sides clashing. This was basically Captain America's Civil War. Everything about it was just fun. And the craziest part is, this match was 53 minutes, one of the longest WWE matches in history, but never has a match this long just flown by. For those 53 minutes, I felt like a kid again. When I watched it live in the arena and when I watched it now, I feel like a little kid just watching this. Literally felt like it was 2005, I'm out here cheering for SmackDown over Raw like it even means anything, and that's the biggest compliment I can give this match. It was the best of 2016 in one match. They took everything that made 2016 in the WWE so special, put it in one match, and they gave us something special, something we'll never forget. They gave us this match that in my opinion is honestly legendary, classic. The other match that made this night so awesome was the main event of Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. Goldberg had not wrestled since 2004, and at no point in the 12 years did it seem like Goldberg was ever gonna come back, was ever gonna wrestle again, and then this match was announced. Going into this match, there wasn't much hype. It was Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. Brock Lesnar is the wrestler who actually wrestles every now and then, okay? He's been booked like a god, he's probably gonna be champion soon. He beat The Undertaker, he beat Cena, Ambrose, Orton, it didn't matter. He beat everyone. So when it was announced it was Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar, it was like, okay, here's another squash match. Brock Lesnar's gonna win easily. This match was literally made just to promote WWE 2K17. There were no expectations for this match. We all expected Brock to go out there and in five minutes just win after a bunch of suplexes, call it a night, and GG. This was going to be boring. So then it was time for the match and out came Lesnar. He did his entrance with Heyman. He was standing in the ring and it felt pretty obvious. Like, alright, here we go. Another Lesnar W. It just didn't make any sense, like they had a 50 year old Goldberg coming back for one more match, were they really going to have him beat Brock Lesnar? And then Goldberg's music played and everything changed. So the crowd began chanting, Goldberg, Goldberg, and it was deafening. The music kept playing and playing and the anticipation kept building and then smoke came out of the stage. And then it was time. Goldberg was standing in the pyro. The arena was just going crazy, chanting his name. Goldberg eventually is in the ring. They were face to face. Everyone just got lost in the moment. Once Goldberg came out and they were face to face, it was like nothing we knew mattered anymore. The bell rang and what we got, nobody ever expected. Goldberg shoved him to the mat. Lesnar got up, spear, and we're like, wait, wait, what? A spear? This early? Okay, okay, let's see what happens. Goldberg is setting up in the corner, Lesnar gets up again, and another spear, and the crowd was just going wild. Heyman was screaming, Brock, Brock, get up, no! Heyman was about to cry. Goldberg sets up Lesnar, does his finisher, he does the jackhammer, and he drops him. Like, okay, Lesnar's gonna kick out and go, you know, super Brock mode, he's gonna beat his ass. One, two, three. The bell rings, what the fuck? 
did we just watch? Everyone was shook. Goldberg squashed Brock Lesnar. Nobody, I mean nobody ever expected this. I was in the crowd. I was in disbelief. My jaw was on the floor. It didn't seem real. Like, huh? Like, wait, wait, what? Old ass Goldberg came back and squashed Brock Lesnar. What the fu- It was insane. Brock Lesnar, who had been booked like a god, he was beating everyone. He destroyed everyone in sight. This is Brock Lesnar, the man who in the summer of 2016 went to the UFC and won. And now he just lost in a minute to go. Literally, he lost in a minute 26. It was a moment that I will never forget. My jaw was on the floor. There was no way that anybody thought Lesnar would lose. To this day, if you go back and type in Survivor Series 2016 predictions, there is no prediction that you can find where it says, no, you know what? Goldberg is going to win this. No, all the predictions. Lesnar wins. Lesnar wins. It was amazing. It was one of those rare times where wrestling actually shocks you. Just look at the post-match thoughts on Reddit. It literally shook every WWE fan out there. And what a night. That was Survivor Series 2016. Sure, they had more matches, but that's what the show was remembered for. Two matches. One match that was 53 minutes, and one match that was less than two minutes. Two total opposite matches, but two matches that in some way left you saying, wow. I loved it. I loved this show. Sure, I am biased because I was there, but it was just a fun time. There was no big WWE title match. There was no crazy five-star wrestling classic. The main event featured a 50-year-old winning in two minutes after not wrestling in 12 years, but I can't sit here and tell you that it was bad or it sucked or anything because even just thinking about it just puts a huge smile on my face. It was just an awesome night. 2016 WWE just brings a smile to my face. Post-draft WWE in 2016 was just special and and this pay-per-view captures that perfectly and I can't believe it's been four years. What a night.